shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Precious blood has left me forgiven Pure like the whitest of snow Sorry, I threw a new curveball at you in the last minute. It's beautiful to see you all together here, friends. It's beautiful outside, um, and it's an awesome chance to come together and worship as one team and one family this morning, and so we are so excited for that. Friends, uh, a couple things coming up. First of all, happy Easter. I hope that you are ready and prepared to spend a weekend uh, just saturating yourself in the beauty and the gift of God's love for us, both in the cross and in the resurrection and new life 
that Jesus promises us and offers us as a free gift. So if you're going home, we hope you travel safely and have a beautiful weekend with family and friends. If you're going to be here, you're welcome to join us. Uh, Fusion, our college church, will be holding a Good Friday service at 7 p.m. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, and then an Easter service, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. But wherever you are, we hope you plug in, find community, and share in the praise and the hope that our Creator gives us. Um, next week, next Thursday, we will have uh, our an April FCA rally. We're going to have another community building rally, and we are going to have just full court dodgeball games. So uh, come on out, bring your friends, there'll be snacks. Uh, we will um, run different flavors of teams kind of on the go, so it should be fun. We might switch you from students versus staff and faculty to men versus women to baseball and volleyball versus soccer and softball and baseball. Uh, it'll be fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun, friends. So come on out, we'll have some uh, shirts maybe to give away as prizes to those who really show their fervor on the court, um, but it'll be fun. And we will then, at that point, look towards our uh, final rally for the spring and talk about that some then. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Spring retreat, if you're interested in uh, uh, attending the spring retreat with us, it is free, and it's just a chance uh, we're hoping to rest and find peace in community together. So that's the theme this spring, is flourishing in peace, rooting ourselves in uh, our community and in our Creator, and finding ways to live that out together as we finish out this spring semester. All right, my friends, I will have Sarah Siebert lead us in an opening prayer. Please bow your head and pray with me. Lord, please open our hearts and minds to what God and Ross are trying to tell us today. Please help us finish this week with passion and excitement. Please help open our hearts to praise you and what you've done in our lives. Please bless our travel homes or to friends' houses or wherever we may be going this Easter break. Bless our Easter and your coming again. In your name we pray. Amen.
Coach Nico will now lead us in a prayer. Please pray with me. God, thank you so much for a break in the midst of school and work. Help us to uh, find peace. Help us to quiet our minds and center ourselves in you. Um, we thank you for bringing, it, bringing us here on purpose. Every single one of us is here because of you. Thank you for the upcoming Easter break. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the forgiveness and love he brings with him. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Coach Nico. You may be seated. And now, as I suspect many of you know, your AD, Ross Simple. Let's hear it. We'll be bringing a word from the Gospel of John. And Ross, I will hand things over to you. You might still think it. Does this work? Are we good? I need to move it. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> We're doing it. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate Derek Drieger, announced as the provost. That's pretty cool. Uh, also, congratulations to our campus ministry team. Obviously, that's the main reason I'm up here um, is because I won, lost. I'm not sure how you want to look at that. Um, but the, the day of giving and the, the different challenges, what a, a great event. Tremendous support for everybody. Um, you know, I think you guys won by 15 donors um, late. I mean, like, super good plan. Uh, when I got the <laughs> athletic director job, um, obviously, Coach Christensen, um, you know, kind of in a role in fundraising. Obviously, I screwed up and have the wrong Christensen hired because Caitlin is much better at it. So, look forward to that. Um, I actually didn't have a, um, this is the one thing that I was hoping I maybe wouldn't have to do, quite honestly, because this is not my cup of tea. Um, speaking, I can do that. Uh, meaningful message, not usually where I'm at. So, um, you know, and then a, maybe a G version of that is probably also a little bit difficult for me. So, um, but the thing that gave me confidence was in, in a meeting uh, Dr. Joan Lubin said, if I did a sermon, she would be there. So here she is, front row. So a um, lot of inspiration there, confidence uh, from her. So I appreciate that. You rascal, you got me up here. So, um, all right. Um, so I, I am um, excited to be here. It's Holy Week. That was actually an email I sent out. Like, are we sure to me today, Holy Week? I'm not sure I'm the guy. Uh, for that, but this is the this is a big show. This is a big deal. Um, so I'm I'm privileged to be here. Hopefully, what I'm going to talk about will make a little bit of sense. If not, uh, Anthony's got to figure it out next week and kind of smooth it over. Um, but this this is obviously a big week uh, with Easter. I mean, Christmas Eve is probably the next biggest date. Uh, so a little nervous to be honest, uh, but hopefully there's some things that uh, make sense. So. The verse that I picked uh, to talk about, um, and I've actually talked about this a little bit from a football perspective with our team years ago. So any of our current football players probably don't know this, but uh, just kind of read uh, the scripture here and then talk about it a little bit. Uh, this is from John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. So Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him. And he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any of you who are without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until Jesus was the only one left with the woman standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. There's a lot to unpack in my opinion here. Um, first is the whole 
thought process of, you know, bringing somebody up in front of Jesus, like, hey, let's, let's test him. All right, let's test this guy again and just see, just to have something that we can go back and accuse him of doing something incorrectly. So that, that in itself, to me, is a tremendous storyline, and obviously we all, all, all know how that um, turned out. Um, the other piece that I'd like to focus on a little bit more was the first thing that Jesus said and the fact that let any, anyone who is without sin be the first to throw the first stone. And to me, he's not sitting here saying she's you know, innocent by any means. But he's asking and telling, hey, evaluate yourself here first. Okay, he understands that this is a trap. Um, and then the last piece, okay, the last piece of go now and leave your life, um, leave your life of sin. He's not letting her off the hook. It's not, it's not something where it's like, hey, you know what, nobody else has, has screwed up um, you know, as bad as you have, no one else is here, so you're, you're off the hook. Leave yourself, leave your life of sin. Okay, and so the, what is the point? Um, and to me, the, the reason that this verse has stuck out, and like I said, I've used this, um, you know, in a, in a post-practice um, talk, and, and some of the football players can tell you, they, you know, I can get into those too. You know, I'll try to keep this under a half hour, but... Um, Kind of joking, but you never know. Um, so for me, th- there's a, a, lot, a lot here to unpack, and all those little storylines make a difference. Okay, what is the point? To me, the point is stop comparing yourself. Stop keeping score. Okay, stop keeping score, right? If you're always evaluating yourself and what you do, and if, if I'm looking for somebody that did something worse than me, but the way that I operate isn't in, in line with how I should be doing things, you're not better. Just because you can find somebody else that did something worse. Stop keeping score. Okay? We're not making progress as individuals, as groups, by trying to find whoever does what's worse. And then we're just making sure we operate just a little bit better than that. Because then we're okay. Because at the end he says, leave your life of sin. Not off the hook. You're not off the hook just because you maybe did something really terrible. You need to fix it. Yeah, that, to me, that's what, that's what this means, and that's the way that I take this. Um, and, and really the part of, you know, anyone who is without sin, you know, you can throw the first stone. Where are we all at? Okay? Where are we as an institution and, and as a community to say, hey, you know what? Are we keeping score? And I'm not talking about sins or not, but in any, anything, building relationships and everything that we're doing. Are we keeping score? Well, geez, you know, they didn't, they didn't return my email right away, so now I'm, you know, I'm going to hold that against them. You know, when I, when I asked for a favor, you know, they weren't there for me, and now I'm overextending myself, so now I'm up one. Now I'm owed. You see that a lot. You see it all the time now. Social media, you see, nobody on social media is posting their worst day. You know what I mean? It's all about where are you at? It's all about comparison. It's all about evaluating yourself. And my question is, and something that I struggle with is, what are you actually doing? Are you doing, are you doing the same thing? Are you comparing yourself? Well, you know, yeah, I didn't maybe have my best year. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, but so-and-so did this, and that's way worse. That's where we're at at times. It's not helping us. It's not helpful for any of us. And to me, that's why this, uh, this chapter and this ver- these verses um, stood out to me I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm kind of going to relate this to athletics because that is, you know, obviously my background. I went to the University of Sioux Falls. I played football there. Uh, I, I was a college football player for 15 minutes, and I'm not going to get into the whole story. I see the football coaches are rolling their eyes like, oh, my God, I've heard this story 75,000 times. Um, I won't get into the whole story. Um, I was a college football player for 15 minutes and tore my ACL, didn't play my whole freshman year. Um, Came back the next year, you know, practicing, and I knew at that time, right, I mean, I haven't, I haven't earned anything, right? So I want to play, I want to do this, and I caught myself at some point that first year when I could be back doing what I'm saying that we shouldn't be doing. As an athlete, okay, you, you find yourself in this, this situation a little bit. Everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to start. Everybody wants to be successful on the court, on the field, okay? But how are you trying to get there? Are you hoping that whoever's in front of you screws up big enough so now you get your chance? Or are you actually doing something to earn an opportunity? I, w- I learned this the hard way. 
I, was, I found myself well, keeping score. Well, geez, my teammate, he's, he's the starter, I'm the backup. But geez, he just gave up a touchdown in practice. So that means I should be moving up the depth chart. I wasn't concerned about what I was actually doing or how I was actually doing. I was just trying to compare myself to what somebody else wasn't doing. And then I was going to keep score. And you know what? I didn't get any better. I never earned a starting job because of that. I had to be better. And I had to learn that. And I learned a lot of things in college. Um, and most of it's from not doing the right thing. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> So we don't have time for those conversations. But the point is, okay, we've all been there. We've all done it. Okay, we've all evaluated ourselves and, and looked at ourselves and maybe looked in the mirror and compared ourselves to somebody else or some other entity and put, made ourselves feel really good or made ourselves feel really bad. And at the end of the day, it only matters what you're willing to do. How are you willing to get better? What are you willing to fix? Stop keeping score. Okay, stop keeping score. Nobody owes you anything. But together we can do some really great things. You can go out of your way to help somebody out, even though they maybe owe you. Just continue to do it. Because at the end of the day, what we're going to accomplish together is going to be far greater than what you're ever going to do on your, on your own. And I had to learn that. I'm still learning that over and over and over again. We all get wrapped up in it. All the time. And my hope is, you know, with this, and I'm not standing up here perfect. I'm not standing up here saying, you know, like, I got it figured out. Um, and I've told our football team this a million times. You know, don't, don't listen to me because I'm perfect. Listen to me because I've screwed it up. And we've all been there. And there's nothing wrong with screwing it up. How do you fix it? You know, I mean, don't keep track of what you didn't do or what you did do. Just continue to be the right person. Do the right thing all the time. We're all going to screw up. We're going to fail. But if we're willing to stay on the path of doing things the right way and helping out and being a good person, we're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And whoever you're doing those things with, you're going to accomplish a lot more things than where you're going on your own. And so I'm not sure if I met my time. I'm probably over, under. I have no idea. But I appreciate it, and uh, hopefully there was something that made sense. If not, I apologize, and uh, look forward to doing this again. Never. Uh, so, thank you. My friends, give a hand for our, our illustrious band member today. Coach You're right here.
Give it up. Beautifully done. My friends, may we go forth from this place in knowledge of the truth that we are one team and one family. Let us see each other and ourselves in the light of Jesus' grace and love rather than seeing our failures. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.